Hello, and welcome to God's One Chosen Channel again. I am Apostle, and I am thankful to God for another day, for another chance to get to expound on this word and study the Bible. Today, we're going to start a series that I think is very needed in the Christian community. I am a Christian man. I am a married man, and I have friends who are Christian and married. And we did a survey, and the survey came back to us, and the number one temptation that Christian men that were surveyed deal with is the temptation of sex. I believe within this society, we are bombarded with sex no matter what we do. You can be driving down the road, and you can look at a billboard, and you will see a, a lady in her underwear. I mean, no matter what we do, sex is all around us, so those thoughts are always creeping into our minds, and we are very confused. So the title that we're going to be dealing with in this series is actually Pornography and Christian Men. I have not heard many preachers stand in the pulpit and speak about this, and it, I wonder why, because so many Christian men struggle with this. I think Kirk Franklin, a while back, he admitted it, and a lot of guys didn't begin to come out and talk about it, but it kind of went away. And I think that is of the devil, because the devil wants it to be in secret. The devil makes us think that, okay, because the internet and cable TV, we can watch pornography at home. We don't have to go to Blockbuster and rent a, a DVD and kind of get embarrassed by the lady who's working behind the counter. We can actually sit at our homes, push a button, and pornography is right there in our face. So what we want to do is we want to get some scriptural backing on what we think, some questions that the Christian man deals with in the area of pornography. Is it okay? Um, is it a sin? Uh, is it, is it considered cheating? And what does it do to your spirit? And why is this especially dangerous for married men? Now, the book that we're going to use in the Bible will be 1 Corinthians. The Apostle Paul, he spoke to the church of Corinth on a lot of things, but they actually struggled with sexual immorality also. Like a lot of Christians today, they struggle with the same things. But Apostle Paul showed them a way to deal with it. That's why we'll go to Scripture and we'll get Scripture back. And the Scripture that we'll be reading from today is actually 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and we'll start at verse 9. Because Apostle Paul is going to show them that you shouldn't even be around people who are sexually immoral. I.e., you shouldn't even be watching people who are sexually immoral. Because if you do that, that's going to open an avenue into your mind where you're going to begin to fantasize about those things that you're seeing. And your reality is totally different from what you see on TV. They get paid a lot of money to do that. And you go to your wife and you expect her to do these things and you're going to cause a lot of problems. Trust me. I've been married for 10 years. I know. You have to approach sex with a godly intent because sex was given to a married couple as a gift and it also multiplies the earth. But we'll go ahead and read into scripture. Once again, that was 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. The Bible says, I have written you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral or the greedy and the swindlers or idolaters. In that case, you would have to leave this world. But now I am writing you that you must not associate with anyone who calls himself a brother. That means anyone that goes to the church, that means a preacher, a deacon, or anyone that's in the church that's in Christ that calls himself a brother. But sexually immoral or greedy, an idolater, a slanderer, a drunkard, or a swindler, with such a man do not even eat. What business is this of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked man from among you. Now, I've seen a lot of preachers lose their churches based on that scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. I've seen a lot because a lot of people, when it says expel the wicked man from among you, because over the years we've seen, I think you can go back if you want to go on a national level, we've seen Jimmy Swagger, we've seen Jim Baker, we've seen uh, Jamal Bryant, we've seen uh, Lately the Truth, we've seen Ty Trivet, we've seen a lot of married men who are under the body, or under the blood of Christ that have fallen for the temptation of sexual immorality. And we have to attack this because the devil is going to attack us with it. I've been married 10 years, and I can tell you, when you're married 10 years and you look at the same woman every day for 10 years, it is easy for the devil to creep in and make you want to look elsewhere. Because this is reality. You are always going to go out into the world and you're going to see a woman that is beautiful. You're going to see a woman that you think is attractive. There's nothing wrong with seeing a beautiful woman. You can't control who's beautiful or not. But what you can control is if you act on that beauty. Now, God did not tell us to hide inside the house so we may avoid sexual immorality. What God wants to do is he wants to get us to a point where we can be around beautiful women. 
And we can be around attractive ladies, and we're not going to ask them for their phone number. We're not going to try to what we call holler at them because God has put us firm in his word, and we know that that is of the devil. This is why we do this Bible study. Once again, the title is Pornography in Christian Men, not Pornography in the World, Pornography in Us, because a lot of us are going to church, and we're dealing with it, and we're looking at pornography. Kirk Franklin brought it out a few years back, and many Christian men began to speak on it, but it kind of died off. People stop talking about it, but I think it's getting bigger and bigger. I saw on television that the pornography industry is a billion-dollar-a-year industry, a billion-dollar-a-year industry. Now, what does that say to me? That says that there's a lot of people in this world that watch pornography, and a lot of people in this world claim to be Christian. So do you think that Christians aren't watching? Yes, we are watching, but it's time for us to tackle it with the Word of God. Now we'll go to 1 Corinthians, and we'll start at Chapter 6, we'll go to verse 13, and we'll see what God says. Verse 13 actually reads, Food is for the stomach and the stomach for food, but God will destroy them both. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know your bodies are the members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ to unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do, don't you know, he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her body. For it is said, the, then too will become flesh. But the, he who unites himself with the Lord is one with the Spirit. Verse 18 reads, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body. But he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Now, what the Apostle Paul is saying is, your body is not yours. Now, what you have to understand, Christian man, is when you were saved, the Holy Spirit came to dwell inside of you. And what we have is a lot of Christian men are dealing with prostitutes. And it's a way to be sneaky. But God says, anything done in the dark shall come to the light. If you, look, if you ask some men and you look around, there are a lot of men that have lost everything because of a 30-minute sexual pleasure session. Their wife found out the woman got pregnant. They, had, they caught a disease, and they brought it to their wife, and they lost everything. Is it really worth that 30 minutes, that hour of pleasure, of satisfaction, of gratification to lose everything, your kids, your home, your relationship, your integrity, your honor? No, it's not worth that. So you have to ask yourself, why do I keep entertaining these thoughts? The thoughts are going to come. But James, in the book of James, it says, resist the devil and he will flee. I am a person. I grew up watching pornography. My uncles, when I was a young guy, when I was a little guy, they, they used to give me Playboy books, and they used to give us uh, pornography uh, deep, um, VCR tapes because they wanted us to be young men. They wanted us to go out and get it. They wanted us to chase women. And I think that infected us. So in my grown life, I began to chase women and I began to act like the guys I saw on those tapes and I began to treat women like I saw. So I had to learn before I came to Christ and actually even after I came to Christ that pornography was of the devil and that is a tool that he will use to get your mind focused off of God because the devil knows God hates sexual immorality. God actually killed 23,000 people in one day because they were sexually immoral. immoral. If you want proof, we'll go to 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 8. And it'll show you that God killed 23,000 people. But what we're going to do, this is part one. We're going to come back and we're going to expound on this because the title is Pornography and Christian Men. I think the devil is trying to attack the body and the head of the body is the man under Christ, and I think he's trying to attack us, so we're going to go ahead and head on with the book. We're going to put on the whole armor of God, and this is the sword. So I pray you'll come back. This is only part one of the series. I am Apostle. This is God's One Chosen Channel, and I pray that you have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in your life. Thank you.